Masechet Rosh Hashanah, Daf Lamed Dalid. This is the second to last Daf of the Masechet. It does have a complicated structure. The contents is uh, pretty straightforward, uh, but we're going to need this chart a couple of times. Uh, what we're going to deal with is a derivation for the following three laws about shofar. First of all, how do you know you're supposed to blow a shofar? The Torah just says, um, Yom Tiro'ah, Zichron Tiro'ah, just means blowing something, but maybe it means a trumpet. We'll see a derivation for that. In fact, two of them. Um, then the second question is, how do you know you're supposed to make a tikiya sandwich? You have a tikiya in the middle and a tikiya before and after. And then we're going to ask, how do you know you have to do three sets of those tikiya sandwiches for nine kolot altogether, which uh, we saw in the Mishnah yesterday. So we're going to derive all of this in two ways. First, we're going to derive all three from the Pasuk in Vayikra that has to do with blowing shofar on Yom Kippur during Yovel. The Pasuk is Vahabarta. We'll see all A, B, and C from there. After we do that, we're going to offer another derivation from the wilderness trumpets when they blew trumpets, and we're going to see the sandwich from there. And then we'll see how the others also uh, belong to that derivation. And once we have those two derivations, we're going to have some further discussion that's going to be some, some back and forth. And so we'll come back to this, but let's jump right into the Talmud. Tenora Banan, we have a Braita. How do you know that you have to blow a shofar on Rosh Hashanah and not something else, a trumpet? We'll read this whole pasuk inside because we're going to come to it a few times. This is regarding Yovel on Rosh on Yom Kippur. Vavarta shofar tedoa. Vavarta means you should literally you should pass, uh, you should um, cause to travel, you should proclaim using a shofar making a tiru'a sound on the eight, on the seventh month, as Tishteh, on the 10th of the month, which is also, which is Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. So you see there's uh, some repetition here because you could have just written Yom Kippur. We know from other Pesukim when Yom Kippur is. And then another repetition, Ta'avidu Shofar B'chalat Sechem. You should pass a Shofar sound in all, all, all of your land. So why all this repetition in the Pasuk? We'll get to that. Right now, we're just focusing on the fact that it says, you should blow a shofar. So for sure, on Yovel, we learn a shofar. We blow a shofar. And the Ela by Yovel. That's true regarding Yovel. But Rosh Hashanah minayin, how do we know Rosh Hashanah is the same? Tamodor b'chodesh shevi'i. She'en tamodor b'chodesh shevi'i. Oma tamodor b'chodesh shevi'i. I'm going to learn it from the words chodesh shevi'i. Because I don't need those words. En tamodomar. I already know it's the seventh month because it says Yom Kippur. So therefore, why is it coming and adding these extra words? The answer, to teach me that the month of Tishrei is one unit. Any blows that have to be done during Tishrei have to be the same. And therefore, since the one on Yom Kippur has to be with a Shofar, so too, the one for Rosh Hashanah every year has to also be with a Shofar. That's the Bachodesh Hashi der- derivation. We're going to use it uh, a couple more times. Okay, so next question. How do I know that? Um, I just said, I said, I have to blow a tirua, tirua, uh, the short sound. Well, how do I know I have to blow a long sound first? I know it doesn't say the word tikia, and uh, we're going to see opinion later that's going to disagree with this derivation because vahabarta is not the same as tikia. But this derivation, this tana is learning it from vahabarta. Uh, which means to pass before, and that uh, suggests a long uh, sound at first, and then tiru'ah. So that's how we know tiki'ah first. And how do you know that after the tiru'ah, also you need to have a long sound? Right, in the pasuk, it says, Vabata shofar, tiru'ah. And then after that, ta'viru shofar. Ta'viru shofar means a long sound. So there you go. You could, if you skip all the words in between, Vabata shofar. There you go. That's how we learn the sandwich. Okay, same thing here. Good, that pasuk is regarding your veil. But Rosh Hashanah Minayin, how do we know the same thing applies? We're going to use the same derivation as we just did. Why don't you use extra words? I know, it says Yom Kippur. I know it's the seventh month. 
החודש, כל התרועות, החודש השביעי, זה כזה. So teach me that, the way that I blow a תרועה with a sandwich, so too is all the, all the blows of, of תשרה have to be in a sandwich, including ראש השנה. Good. Now, the last thing I'm going to derive, I know I have to have a set of three. How do I not have to repeat that set three times? As we saw yesterday, right, the essential uh, mitzvah is to blow a tikiyah tiruah tikiyah for malchuyot, again for zikhrot, again for shofarot, nine altogether. How do I know to have to do the set three times, right? So up to here now, we're deriving these three sets. Um, uh, שאין מנין לשלושה שלושה תמוד לומר ועברת שופר תרועה שבתון זיכרון תרועה יום תרועה יהיה לכם. Okay, so ready for this, we can't just use one פסוק from, from יובל. That's one of the פסוקים, that's the first one, ועברת שופר תרועה. But we're also going to bring in שבתון זיכרון תרועה from פרשת אמור regarding ראש השנה, it's called זיכרון תרועה. And also from um, Sefer Bimidbar in Pinchas, which talks about the Korbanot, it calls it Yom Teruah, right? Zichron Teruah and Yom Teruah. Both those second two Pesukim are both about Rosh Hashanah. So what do you see? That we bring them all together. It says three times in the Torah, Teruah. So that, there you go. I know you need three sets. Now, this is not quite so simple because one of them is about Yovel. Two of them are regarding Rosh Hashanah. So how do we count them all together? So how do we know that we connect and mix them all together to say there should be three on Yovel and three on Rosh Hashanah? The answer is, it says Shevi'i regarding Yovel. It also says Shevi'i regarding uh, Rosh Hashanah. is also in the uh, seventh month. It says in Baikra 23. So I connect the two Shevi'is together. And there you go. I mean, you can't just take any, any Shivi'i in the whole Torah and say, okay, blow Shofar three times uh, there. Uh, but they're both talking about a similar context. They both do mention a Teruah. And so therefore, uh, there's some, uh, the context is also important, not only the single word Shivi'i. Uh, and so therefore, we can make a Gezerah Shava. Gezerah Shava has a, a long history in itself. The early Gezerat Shavot in Tanerik Midrashim are really very specific to uh, a unique phrase or where there's something extra about one of them. Um, but as time goes along, may we make the, we find Gezerat Shavot even with words. But you always have to look at the context because usually that's an indication. Um, eventually, uh, in order that Gezerat don't get out of, out of hand, Amora Im teach that you can't make a Gezerat Shavot on your own. You have to have a tradition about it. But okay, this is a Gezerat Shavot that they have. Now, Hakesad has this work, Shalosh Shehen Tesha. So there, now that we know that each Tiduah has to be a, a sandwich, that's three, and I have to repeat the set three times, that's uh, nine altogether. And how long is each one? We're repeating here from, from the Mishnah yesterday. Shiur Tikiah Ket Tiduah. One long Tikiah is the same the amount of time if it, you blow that for three seconds, then the Tiduah should also be for three seconds. Shiur Tiduah Kishlosha Shebarim. A Tiduah, the broken, the very short, do, 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 broken sounds is equivalent to three Shebarim. So Shebarim is in between intermediate sound. And so if uh, each Shever is one second, so then now three Shebarim would make one Tiki'ah. And uh, three, uh, each each part of a teruah, each do of a teruah would be a third of a second, and then you get um, the uh, three different types of sounds are all equivalent. But you're going to be nine sounds all together. Good. Now, question about this gezerah shava. Question, the first two halachot, A and B, you learn from a, uh, from a hekesh. From the context, you said it says Chodesh Shavii, everything in Chodesh Shavii, in Kippur and Rosh Hashanah have the same laws. So fine, we accepted that. But then when it comes to the three sets, now all of a sudden you introduce a Gezer Shava. Why? Why don't you just use the Hekesh as you did before? And the answer is, you're right, we could have. If I didn't have the Gezer Shava, then yes, I would have relied on the Hekesh just from the Yovel Pasuk. 
But now that you tell me, you have a Gezer HaShava, like maybe you have a tradition for it, or you, ha- you have a good, a good reason to, to apply it. So good, it's even stronger. Um, I don't need the Hekesh. But really, you're right, I could have used the Hekesh. Right? The truth is that there is a reason to use one over the other in each case. Regarding A and B, we derive it from, from a single pasuk, right? We know that it's true, that you have to blow a Shafad, and that you need the sandwich from Baikra 25 by itself. So Chodesh Shavi says, oh, expand it to everything, to Rosh Hashanah as well. Whereas the three sets, I don't know from Yovel by itself, actually need all three Pesukim, one in Yovel and two in Rosh Hashanah in order to drive anything. So it's not like, I, it's not a one-way street, it's two-way street. And therefore to, to combine them all together, um, I have more Pesukim and I need more Pesukim. So in this case, it's, it, would make, it makes more sense to use a, a, use a Gezerah Shava uh, to say that we count all three, and we apply all three, both to Rosh Hashanah and to Yovel. Uh, very good, right? Like as I show, have I mean, now that I have it, I can use the Hekesh. All right, good. So now we finished uh, number one. We have uh, from this Pasuk in Vayikra 25, we learn all three of these laws. And now we're going to shift and show that there is another opinion, another Tana who can learn B, this Tikiah sandwich, from the wilderness. So let's see how he does it first. So this Tana also is going to use a Gezerah Shava, but using a different word, not Shevi'i, and he's going to use it from a Pasuk in Bemidbar 10. Good, let's see how he does it. Detanya. Utkatem Teru'ah. This is when Hashem tells Moshe, go and make trumpets of silver, and you're going to use them for various purposes. And here, here's how you blow them. And let's read the Pesukim. Utkatem kedma. When you blow a tirua, then the camp on the east side, which is which moves first, they're in front, they will start marching. Utkatem shenit. Then when you blow a second tirua, then the ones on the south side will start moving. And then it has a conclusion. And this is in summary how they will travel by blowing. Uh, blowing these sounds uh, from the trumpets. So you see there's some repetition in this pasuk, and that's what we're going to use. Tiki'ah bifnatsma, utra bifnatsma. The first thing that we're going to do is derive something that we were assuming all along, but is worth saying explicitly, which is that there are two different types of sound that one can use, blow, in the trumpets in this case. And one is a long sound, tiki'ah, and the other one is a tiru'ah, a short sound. Uh, so just, just from the phrase utkatem tedua, so we see that these are two words, so they're two different sounds, right? Well, maybe not necessarily. This is a typical form for midrash halacha that you say the hypothesis and then you question the hypothesis and then you bring a proof. So now we're questioning. You say tikia is one type of sound and tedua is another type of sound. Maybe not. Maybe tiki'ah is a synonym for tiru'ah. So one's just a verb and a noun. Uh, utkatem tiru'ah. You should blow a blow. Uh, and it really is for there's only one type of sound. No, that can't be. Keshomer eta In the later pasuk in that paragraph, it says, not when you're marching, but rather when you want to gather everyone together for a big meeting. So then you have to do a tiki'ah and not a tiru'ah. Oh, so now we see, you see that there's a difference between the two. So now it's clear that these two words refers to two different types of sound. It doesn't say explicitly which one's which, right? But we can figure out. You make a long sound when you want to bring everyone together. And don't do tiru'a. If you do a tiru'a, they're going to think it's a time of war. Um, good. So now we derive something basic that, in fact, there are two different sounds. Um, and so that's very important. The truth is in the Peshat of some of these Pesukim, uh, the word Teru'ah can, uh, teru'ah can mean Tiki'ah. Uh, you, you have to look at each Pesuk and how the word is used. So the word Teru'ah can have multiple meanings, but the point is that at least sometimes it does have a separate meaning, so there's two types of sounds. Good. Now that we know that, let's derive what we were looking for. I know that a Teru'ah means a broken sound. How do I know that I have to have a long sound before it? So now we're not learning from the Ovel Pasuk like Tana, the first Tana did. We're doing another one. Since it says Utkatem, 
utkatem is tikiah, and then it says teruah. There you go, tikiah, teruah. It's right there. Or we're taking it almost as if they're as as they're both uh, nouns, right? Do a tikiah, and then do a teruah. And how do you know that after you do the teruah, you have another long sound? In other words, we, we're going to bring the pesukim together. Utkatem teruah, and then after that, utkatem. All right, so uh, that is uh, 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 sorry, not learning from there, from the very end of that pasuk. The pasuk five says utkatem teruah, and the end of pasuk six says teruah yitkeu. So tikiah teruah, there you go, and then after the teruah yitkeu tikiah tikiah teruah tikiah. That's how we learn the sandwich from the very sandwich that is found in this pasuk. A uh, pasuk almost has a, itself is a, in a chiastic structure, a beginning and end. Okay, very good. So now we have a derivation for the sandwich from the wilderness. Now, sub uh, a subsection of this, Rabbi Ishmael ben Osh, Rabbi Yochanan ben Beroka, Omer. Rabbi Ishmael is also going to derive the sandwich from the wilderness, just in a slightly different way. But fundamentally, it's the same. He says, Eno sarich. What you just did here is too complicated. I have a simpler way to do it. You see the Pasuk says, first they blow it one time and the Eastern camp will, will, will travel. And then you blow it again a second time. I can count. I can see they blew it once for the East and then they blow it again for the South. And that's a second time. You don't need to tell me Shenit. So, what is the word shenit coming to add? This is an archetype. We say it once in one place, and we derive from every other to every other similar uh, context. Anytime you say has there's a teruah, you're going to have to have a shenit, another tikiah. So, in other words, he agrees that. You, the beginning of the pasuk says utkatem teruah. That's tikiah teruah. And then from the fact that it says teruah shenit means you have to repeat the tikiah that you said before and make a sandwich. So and that's true for every tikiah. Um, good. Every teruah. Zebanav she koma kom shema teruah te tikiah tikiah sheniyala enli ela b'midbar. And now finally we say. Okay, I know that in the desert, that's true. You need to make a sandwich. Rosh Hashanah minayin. How do you know have to make a sandwich on Rosh Hashanah? Tamudomar teruah, teruah ligzera shava. Oh, it says the word teruah regarding the desert encampment. And it says the word teruah regarding Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, I make a different gezera shava. Not the one that the, the, the first one made with uh, shivi'i shivi'i, but rather uh, teruah, teruah. So there you go. That's... Um, that's we have now a derivation uh, from Yovel for all three, and we have a de derivation from the wilderness trumpets for the making a tikiah sandwich. And in fact, we have two different versions of, of that derivation. Doesn't really matter which one, they are effectively the same thing. Okay, good. Now, Vishalosh Tiruotnem Rubroshashana. Now, once again, we're just going to come back to the fact uh, that we have to have three, right? This this part, three sets. And how do we know that? We're going to quote the same three pesukim. Shabbaton zichron teruah. That's the pasuk in Emor about Rosh Hashanah. Yom teruah. Uh, that's the pasuk in Bemidbar Parashat Pinchas. Ubachodesh shivi bechad achodesh mikra kodesh yelachem. Chol mitav lo tasu yom teruah yelachem. And finally, ubash v'habata shavah teruah. And also from Vayikra, it says the word um, uh, there also that you are going to make a teruah. So three times teruah. And since it's three times teruah, ushtet tikyot dechol echat vechat. And you just told me I have to make a sandwich for each one. So three teruot and uh, times two plus uh, uh, two tikyot for each. Masidun medin shalosh teruot. So now I know that there's three teruot, each one is in a sandwich, six tikiot altogether on Rosh Hashanah. So far, so good. And um, this, this fits with uh, the, 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 the wilderness derivation just as well, right? The teruot are all equivalent. Um, okay, now we're going to get to something that is a little bit complicated, but not too much. So we have three pisukim here. 
we were assuming here that three pesukim, if we derive something from a, from a pasuk, then that means it's from the Torah. But now we're going to see two opinions and that say, since these one or two of these pesukim are actually needed for something else, they're actually, you can't use them also for, uh, for learning a third set. And uh, therefore, we're going to call it the Let's have, Let's see how this works. Shetayim Divrei Torah, two of these pesukim are explicit. And so we, yes, you have to make two sets uh, are from the Torah. But one of, this, one of these pesukim is only a hint. And therefore, the third set, the blowing the third of the three sets, is only midivresofrim, a lower level. It's like a drabanan, or maybe a strong drabanan, divresofrim, sometimes you use uh, to, for something as quoted from a navi. Okay, so this has an important source, but not explicit in Torah. Shabbaton zichron teruah. So these two pesukim, those are explicit. And I know that we have to uh, blow the shofar. That's two sets. Those are explicit in the Torah. But the pasuk from Bemidbar, Yom Teruah Yelachem, right? This pasuk here, that one we use for the Gezera Shava. And the truth is that we can use any of these Pesukim for Gezera Shava because they all have the word Tidua in them. But right now we're choosing this one from Bemidbar. In a second, we'll switch it up. Uh, so according to this, we have uh, two Pesukim are explicit and one is not. And that's what you see here. So this is the first opinion that says, regarding the wilderness trumpets, I know I need a Gezerah Shava, and so I have to use Bemidbar 29 for that. It's needed for Gezerah Shava, and therefore I can use the, um, the Pasuk from, the, the, this Pasuk cannot tell me a, new, a third set, so two sets are from the Torah. This third set is only Midivre Sofrim. And by now we're going to have another version of Rabbi Ochanan that says, actually, no, it's Vayikra 23. That's the one needed for a Gezerah Shava. And by 29, I need for something else to teach me that I blow Shofar during the day and not during the night. Let's see that. Rabbi Shemuel Bar Nachmani Amar Rabbi Yonatan. Sorry, Yonatan. Uh, only one of the Pesukim is explicit to tell me I have to blow one set uh, on Rosh Hashanah and Yovel, and two of them are only, are only derived, which one? That's the one in Yovel, that's from the Torah. The two Pesukim that are regarding Rosh Hashanah, those come, I need those for other derivations. So they're not explicit. According to this, really only one set of tikiah is from the Torah explicitly. The other two are added on. Okay, so my what do you mean I have need these for derivations? What derivations? One of them I need for the Gezerah Shava. Good. That's the one from Vaikra 23. And the other, balayla. Um, we're switching it around because we want this pasuk that says uh, yom, right? Yom teruah, yom teruah yelachem to teach me that I only am obligated to blow shofar during the day and not at night. And so there you go. I have both of them. Now, ve'idach, according to the first opinion here, where, where does, since he only has one pasuk that is needed for Gezerah Shavah, not two, how is he going to derive the law that you need to blow shofar only in the day and not on the night. The answer is Oh, the pasuk from Vayikra 25 that talked about your veil that you blow on Yom Kippur. Well, Yom Kippur has the word Yom in it. So I can use that to tell me that after blow shofar during the day and not the night. Oh, but now we ask a really tough question. Once you're using the Pasuk from Vayikra 25 as a source, and you're going to derive from that that also on Rosh Hashanah has to be during the day and all the night. Now you're opening up this, this channel to learn from Vayikra 25 to Rosh Hashanah. To Rosh Hashanah. And in that case, you may as well go back and agree with number one that says Vavarta of Yovel. And you don't have to bother uh, deriving it from the wilderness trumpets uh, because you already used this pasuk from 20, 25 for one reason. So use it for everything. 
Why don't you do that? Why are you insisting on the wilderness trumpets and want to use the Bahavarta? Maybe I'm keeping my left name on Name. Use that also to derive the sandwich law. The answer is that opinion says that doesn't mean to blow a shofar. It means to to pass to pass something along. He doesn't think it means to blow uh, to blow a shofar. All right. If he doesn't think then I think it means to blow a shofar, then what does it mean? Oh, he derives something else from it, from both of those words. He learns two things. From the word Babarta, he learns that you have to blow the shofar from the small hole, blow in, and the sound will come out of the big hole because the way the way that it grows, the way that the, it grows naturally is the small part grows and then it gets bigger and bigger and, and then you cut it off where the wide. And so this teaches me that I can't uh, uh, warm up the shofar in, in warm water and then make the small hole bigger and the big hole smaller and blow it the opposite way. That's what he learns from the word v'ha'abarta. And from the word ta'aviru, uh, I might have thought that was when it says to you take a shofar, Maybe I just carry a shofar around, uh, not even blow it. It's a strange havamina. I don't know why someone would think you just carry it around. No, this, this teaches me that um, ta, that ta'avidu, I have to, I have to in fact, um, uh, blow the, the shofar. Good. So now that, that I know why this second opinion doesn't want to use va, the word vavarta, these laws, now we have a question back on the first Tana that learned Vahavarta uh, of Yovel, how does he derive those laws that you can't blow it the opposite way? Oh, he can learn that you can't blow it the wrong, the wrong way from the fact that the Torah uses the word Vahavarta uh, rather than Tikiah, uh, say Titkeu. Why would it say Ta'aviru? Um, so that so now we learn two things that the uh, that you have to blow the shofar and also from the unusual word I know that you have to blow it the way that it grows so we can learn both things from that and the other question that you had how do I know that I don't just carry it around nah that's not a that's not a havamina because I can derive that from another place we have the same verb used here regarding Shofar and regarding Moshe, Ketiv Achav Abata Shofar Teruwa, Uchtiv Atan Vaisa Moshe Vayavidu Kol Ba Machane. Another place, Moshe commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout the camp. So you, the, here it says Vayavidu, and that refers to a sound. In other words, say these words and go and repeat them throughout the camp. So Leavir is we is implied that you are. Uh, passing a sound, malalan bekol, afkan bekol. So, so too we know here that when it says tavido, it means uh, using a sound. Uh, not just that you can carry around a shofar, but you're going to blow a shofar and make a sound with it. So it's implied within the word itself. And therefore, according to um, that first tana, you can use vavarta to teach me a sandwich. That, that's referring to a tikia uh, before and after. Good. Now, a question on the wilderness opinion. Hold on, we don't have a full derivation because since in the desert they blew trumpets, not a shofar. So how does he know that you're supposed to blow a shofar? Right? We had a good answer for that for uh, the derivation A. He learned it from Yovel, and you know, Yovel says explicitly it's a shofar. But in the wilderness, it's trumpets. So if I'm using that for the Gezer Ashava, then maybe I will say for Rosh Hashanah, it's also trumpets and not a shofar. Oh, for this, he will answer from a different source. So he will learn it from that back to the Mizmor of Rosh Hashanah that you should blow on the month. The word Chodesh here probably actually means the new moon, uh, a shofar on the covered time. It's parallel to Bachodesh for our holiday. What holiday uh, do we celebrate during the time when the moon is covered? Most holidays are in the middle of the month. Well, that's Rosh Hashanah. And this Pasuk says Shofar. So even though it's from Tehillim, and we don't usually derive Halachot from Tehillim, nevertheless, it's fine here because 
um, it's just explaining what we what what exactly you're supposed to blow. You know that you have to blow from the Torah itself, and that's how the opinion that says in the wilderness will derive this law. And so that concludes this entire section. We derive these three laws, both uh, from the Vavatavio Veil and from the wilderness trumpets. And we asked about uh, regarding the wilderness trumpets, there's two ways, uh, two different bits of that you can use for that Gezer Shava. And whether you need another one, uh, even yet another one or not, to teach day and not night, and then we ask questions on each uh, number one, number two, which uh, why they disagree with each other, and we're able to derive all the laws according to both derivations, and so everybody is happy. And now we get to the uh, second part of the daf at Ken Rebi Abu Bekesari Tikia Shilosha Shevarim. Uh, so Rabbi Abhu, who lived in Kesaria, uh, there was uh, Kesaria was an important uh, city because it was the with the Roman uh, seat of seat of the local Roman government and their army. It was a very mixed city, cosmopolitan, lots of non-Jews, but many Jews as well. And Rabbi Abhu, uh, who lived there, he made the following decree that we should blow not just uh, Tashat and Tarat. As we saw yesterday, right? We mentioned yesterday that you have tikiya, tiduah, tikiya. But what is tiduah? Is it um, very short, whimpering sounds, or is it sigh longer, sighing, moaning sounds? And we saw from MC Sada. Since we weren't sure, we do both uh, tashat and tarat. But he said, do something else. Also tashrat, tikiya, shavarim, tiduah, tikiya. In other words, do tikiya three medium length shivarim, then tiru'a, the very short ones, and then tiki'a again. Now we ask to Rabbi Abhu, why? Why would you have to do that? Manafshach, i yalu leyalel lavi tiki'a tiru'a tiki'a, i ganuche ganach lavi tiki'a shilosha shivarim utki'a. Make up your mind. If you think it should be very short, um, whimpering sounds, so then do tiki'a tiru'a tiki'a. If you think it should be longer, moaning sounds, then you should do tiki'a, shivarim, and tiki'a. So uh, why would you do tashrat? So we answer, He's not sure which one it is, if it's the moaning or whimpering. Okay, now this really doesn't answer yet because we already took care of the, that suffix by doing two sets, tarat, tashat, and tarat. So what's with the tashrat? And furthermore, it even is, seems to be worse by, if you do that because you're introducing a hefsek, a separation. So here we're going to ask on both sides. Matkif l'arav avira. The deal may yalu lehava ve kamafsik shelosha shevarim ben teru'a lit ki'a. In other words, if you think that it is in fact the very short sounds, right? So go back. What well, he has a, a tiki'a shevarim teru'a tiki'a. If you think it's teru'a is the correct one, then you're doing tiki'a. That's good. Then you're breaking it up between with shevarim, and uh, shevarim is nothing. So now you just have a hefsek between the tiki'a and teru'a. So you didn't fulfill anything. Um, no, because afterwards he does just the tarat, so there's no sefek, there's no hefsek there. Okay, now the opposite. Maybe it's the uh, longer moaning sound. So you did tikia, uh, shevarim, good, but now you make hefsek by doing a tarua. And before the, the before the last tikiya, that's no good. And they'll answer that that ave tikiya shavarim tikiya. No, it's okay. We don't have to worry about the hefsek because he's going to do a tashat. Yeah, fine. But now ela de biabu mayat ken. What kind of takana is he is he saying? Since he just said that in any case tashrat doesn't work because either the shavarim will be a hefsek or the teruah is hefsek, and he's relying on the tashat and tarat. So then don't do don't do tashrat at all. What exactly did he add? If you think it's to be supposed to be the uh, moaning, he did that. If he did the whimpering, he did that. The answer is, there's really three kinds of crying. One is just moaning and sighing. One is just whimpering. But sometimes they're both, right? Sometimes you feel both of those or one after the other. So then, therefore, you have to even feel that as well. All right. Okay, if you're going to add a third set, maybe you have to add a fourth set. Maybe the other way around. Maybe you have to do the tikiya, then the tiruah, the very short, then 
three of the shivarim, uh, the medium ones, and then tikiya. In other words, not only do tashrat, but also tarshat. You have, and you can have four sets uh, in each in each place. Uh, okay, good question. Um, the tikiya dilma yalel veganach. Maybe does both. No, the answer is setama de milta ki mitra be inish milita veresha ganach. No, go look at what how people act. And generally, if they're sad about something, first they're going to go in the moaning and sighing, and then when they get deeper into their sadness and uh, they're 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 really very very sad, then they go into the whimpering, uh, the very short ones. And um, so that's the way it goes. It, that doesn't go the opposite. You don't start with a short short whimpering and then go into moaning. You go into a deeper cry and so therefore the tashrat is sufficient and you don't have to go the other way around um okay and now we get to the next topic uh, the mishnah mentioned that if one is saying the tikiya tiroa tikiya and this last tikiya makes very long and he has in mind it'll be the third of the first set and the first tikiya of the second set no good you have to stop between them and take a break Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Shama Tesha Tikiot Betesha Shaot Bayom Yasa. Rabbi Yochanan has a related law. Um, what if you want to? I know you just said you have to take a break. What if I take a very long break, an hour? And let's say I, I say uh, an hour between each. I take, I do, I make a tikiyah at seven in the morning. Then I come back at eight and make a tiroah. Then come back at nine and do another tikiyah. And then every hour I do another one. Is that okay? Rabbi Yochanan says yes. You fulfill your mitzvah. Very good. Um, in other words, you have to just hear these things in order. They don't have to be back to back. Tanya and Mehachi. Rabbi Yochanan has a Braita backing him up. That says the same word. There you go. Once we quote the Braita, we're going to quote uh, uh, the, uh, in entirety. If you hear nine uh, blows from nine people all at the same time, you have nine people, each with their shafar. And three of them blow to do out, and six of them blow tikiot. No good. You don't fulfill your obligation. Uh, and uh, why? Well, you know, we just said you have to hear them in 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 order. They don't have to be all together, but you have to hear a sandwich tikiot, then to do then tikiot, then it's a sandwich. You roll at the same time. It's no good. Okay, that's is interesting. That she here who suggests that the girsa should be yasa, because after all, we said in a, a few days ago that even though in general you can't hear two sounds at once, if it's a mitzv- beloved mitzvah, like Megillat Esther and like Shofar, then people will pay attention and hear one, one at a time. And therefore it should be yasa. Tosafot rejects this, however. It says lo yasa is correct. Because yeah, even though if you have multiple, you have trumpets and Shofar playing at the same time, you can zero in on the trumpet, on the, on the Shofar only. Yeah, you can do that, but you can't hear both. You can't pay attention to both at the same time. And also it doesn't solve the problem of hearing them in sequence if they're both played at the same time. So therefore it really should in fact be loyasa as we have it here. Another law, tikiya mizeus from mizeyasa. You have two different people blowing, right? Person A blows tikiya. Person B blows tiroa. That's fine. You can switch off. Um, and that happens often if, uh, you know, Baal Tokea gets stuck and he can't get the sound out, then someone else takes over in the middle. That's fine. And even if it's separated uh, in intervals, even if it's the whole day, as we said, that is permissible. Okay, now we have uh, a, a proof. Good. We have a proof for it to be Yochanan. Now we have a contradiction. Rabbi Yochanan said the name of his teacher to be Shimon ben Yosadak. Let's say you're saying Halel, and you said the first two paragraphs, then you take a break. If the break is has enough time in the break to say the whole Halel, if it takes you uh, 10 minutes to say Halel, and so you said the first two paragraphs, you took a break for 10 minutes, you came back, you have to go back to the beginning, Chozer Ladosh. So you see, according to this, Rabbi Yochanan says, you're not allowed to take a long break in the middle. And for, you know, Shofar, it'll be much shorter, because how long does it take to do nine, nine sounds, right? Just a couple of minutes. And so, according to this, you cannot take a break. How come Yibu Hanan says over here that you are allowed to take a break? Now, the truth is, uh, it's not necessarily a contradiction, because talking about two different contexts. And the Talmud Yerushalmi here, in fact, says that Halel and Megillah are different, because that's a unit. You're saying of praise together. You can't say half a praise and then come back. Megillah is a story. You tell half a story, and then uh, you come back for the rest. It's like 
you know, watching movies in Israel, they take a smoking break. You know, it breaks, uh, breaks it up. It's no good, especially if it's long enough that you could read the whole Megillah to stand in the middle, and then you're going to come back. No, you got to start from the beginning. Whereas Shofar is not a story, right? It's not, according to the Yushami, it's not a unit. You just have to hear these sounds at some point in this order. And so this is, really, the Biochanan could agree with this. But the Bavli doesn't take it that way. The Bavli says, no, oh, they're all the same. They're all either a unit or they're all not a unit. And uh, how do we resolve the contradiction? La kashya, hadideh, The answer is, Rabbi Yochanan, when he said it was lenient and said you can take a break, that's his own opinion. When he said this, that you cannot take a break, that he was saying in the name of his teacher, but he doesn't agree with his teacher, Rabbi Shimon ben Yehosadah. Okay, so we, we solved that. One more contradiction, Vididela, and he himself thinks that you can take a break. This story proves the opposite. Rabbi Abhu was a student of Rabbi Yochanan, and he was following him uh, one day, walking next to him, walking behind him. And Rabbi Abhu was saying Shema. He got to an area of the city that was smelly, and you're not allowed to say Shema. With, when there's a bad smell. So he stopped saying Shema. He was saying while he was walking, right? And then, after they got out of this bad smell place, and now he asked the Biochanan, the teacher, can I continue from where I left off? She's no, if you waited enough time that you could say the whole Shema, then you have to start it from the beginning again. So this, according to this, the Biochanan thinks you cannot take a long break. And so which one is it? You just said he himself thinks you can take a long break. And now we have a story where he taught his student that you are not allowed to take a long break. So how are we going to resolve that? The answer is, mm-hmm. So actually, according to me, I think you can take a long break and therefore you can continue from where you left off. However, to be Abu, I know you and I know that you don't, dis- you don't agree with that. And you think in general, you cannot take a long break. So therefore, I'm telling you, according to you, you should not, you have to go back to the beginning. And that way we resolve it. Rabbi Yochanan himself thinks you could take a long break, but his teacher and the student both disagree with him. Uh, it's okay. It's a bit of a forced uh, uh, answer because uh, generally, if a student is asking a teacher a question, the teacher is going to give his opinion, right? You're, you're the student. And, you know, if Rabbi Abu already had an opinion about it, why is he asking Rabbi Yochanan? And so um, it sounds like the, pesha, the, the simpler answer is what the Yerushalmi said is different. Shema is also a unit. You can't break it up. Only Shofar. You just have to hear those in order. Um, but uh, it seems that uh, the Bavli is saying, no, they're all conceptually the same and therefore has to resolve the, uh, have to, has to resolve the contradictions in this way. Okay, there's more to the daf, but tomorrow's daf is very short, so we will continue and complete the Masechet uh, tomorrow. Baruch Adonai Amen ve'amen.